Skyking, Skyking, do not answer. The car is time 07. The Sony 20mm f2.8 to f16 APS-C E-mount lens, as soft as smothering yourself in the unwashed bosom of the Airbnb pillow, as the Chechenian immigrant boy you picked up at a local truck stop tickles your heels into that eternal dark oblivion. <sighs> or, that's what most initial reviewers wanted you to think. Honestly, I don't think the Sony 20mm is all that bad. It's just a pancake lens. Not a like a theme bar, and by that nature, it's already got a lot of good stuff going for it. First off, let's talk about the price. A new Sony 20mm will run you about $300. And while that's not exactly pocket change, that's about $200 cheaper than the semi-professional Sony Ultrawide 10 to 18mm, whose maximum aperture only goes up to about f4. And while the Sony is about $100 more than its closest off-market competitor, the Sigma 19mm f2.8, the Sony 20 at least gives you the added bonus of not having that terrible magnetic AF system that makes your frame pulsate like the veins on your grandfather's forehead when you have to remind him that he was never on the peninsula. He just mixed up his heart medication last year and climbed onto a Korea to California coastal tour bus. And let's talk about the build quality and features of the Sony 20mm f2.8. This six element lens has three spherical elements, promising reduced distortion and aberration. All of this being only about an inch in height. I mean, look at this damn thing. It's a true blooded pancake lens that's even smaller than the Sony PZ kit lens fully retracted. Only weighing in at about 69 grams, the small size and surprisingly lightweight build means you'll hardly notice that it's mounted to the front of your camera at all when you're shooting with this. However, that diminutive size can count against lens. The metal focus ring throws fairly smoothly, but personally I had to put on an aftermarket metal lens hood just to give my fingers a good point of reference between the focus ring and the body bezels of the lens. Furthermore, smaller lenses often have to make compromises with image quality and features, and the Sony 20mm is no exception to that. The key feature, and maybe only feature of this lens, is that it does have the Sony AF motors that focus blazingly quietly and quickly, but the lack of optical steady shot might chuff some video nerds. But frankly, most pancake lenses and cine lenses lack optical steady shot of any kind, so consider it as good as a cine lens in that regard for image quality. The Sony is tack sharp around the center, but there is a noticeable clarity fall off and vignetting around the edges at basically every aperture, along with barrel distortion. I mean, it really shouldn't be a surprise that a pancake lens isn't going to have the best image quality in the world, but as Ken Rockwell said in his Sony 20mm write-up, lens sharpness has nothing to do with picture sharpness. Every lens made within the past hundred years is more than sharp enough to make a super sharp picture if you know what you're doing. The only limitation to picture sharpness is your skills as a photographer. Well, Ken, that was awfully chastising of you. And if you're as unskilled as I am, a lot of the complaints about the IQ of this lens can be fixed with a bit of Lightroom post-processing wizardry. For the bokeh bits. Eh. You might want to look further down the Sony line for what Kai Wong likes to call the most creamy, cheesy, delicious bokeh balls out there. But that's just kind of the nature of wider, slower lenses. However, if you do get up close enough for those out of focus bits, the bokeh is not actually as bad as you would expect. It's just not buttery smooth. 
Sony claims bokeh is also improved by way of the Sony's seven circular aperture blade structure, and while that's only effective to a certain extent, it's still something that you won't be finding on other competitors. So, the Sony 20mm, it's not your creative Deus Ex Machina, it won't make you breakfast in the morning, nullify your restraining orders, or bring your ex-wife and kids back. So, what good is this lens for anyway? Well, capturing decent still images, especially for the price point and when it comes to travel and street photography. The light and relatively quick lens is a perfect travel companion that you can throw on your camera and head out for the day, and continue to shoot with it from sunup to sundown. The equivalent 32mm focal length is a good mix between a wide angle and a standard nifty 50, making it in good form to capture anything from street portraitures with plenty of locational context left to some architectural and maybe even landscape photography if you can put up with the edges. Remember, some of the greatest street photography cameras like the Ricoh GR and Fuji X100 series use 28 to 35 equivalent lenses, and I often find the Ricoh's 28mm lens to be a little too wide compared to the 35 equivalent of the Fuji. The wider lenses often place you closer in striking distance of those in the street that you're trying to turn into your artistic release. But this is all just my personal conjecture, heavily influenced by pre-existing information and my first impressions of the lens. If you know anything about online reviewers or people in general, it's that we're so full of our own that it's hard to see past it. And what good is a travel lens if you don't travel with it? So let's take this on the road and shoot some stuff. Cue the travel montage that I probably won't be bothered to shoot. <laughs> Tummy grumbling. Oh god, come on, be a brave little toaster. You got it this far. <clears throat> oh, sweet release. Alright, so we're back from travel and on to further impressions of the lens as well as some photos and videos taken along the way. I tried to challenge myself to only use this lens during the entire trip, and while the Sony 20mm did handle most of my needs, I did find myself wanting to reach for my Sony 18-105 to f4 just to have the utility of that zoom range. If size, portability, and price weren't factors, of course a standard zoom range like that with a constant aperture would be my personal go-to for travel, just for versatility's sake. Even small APS-C built zoom lenses like the 18-105 to are still pretty big and bulky compared to a pancake lens. And talking about the Sony 20mm is definitely not a discussion on the luxuries of life on the road, it's a discussion of portable compromise. The Sony 20mm is definitely not the best lens for professional video work. For many technical reasons, I'm sure a full sales college indie filmmaker who double mortgages their condo for thousands of dollars worth of cine glass will tell you again and again. Especially with its lack of OSS making it not as friendly for vloggers or even the average consumer, but, for run-and-gun fun, 
I was surprised to see that this Sony 20mm performed admirably well enough with the steady shot of a not so steady hand, and the equivalent 32mm focal range paired up nicely with footage from the iPhone XR 28mm lens. I could definitely see a scenario where you could use this for some sort of shaky gorilla style footage using an iPhone or an action cam as a B cam. I mean, I'd avoid it like that one perpetually drunk college philosophy major at a get together that no one invited, trying to tell me about his unofficial master's thesis on how his Oedipus complex isn't as weird as my underdeveloped mind might understand, and we should probably just get it over with and kiss already. But if I had no other choice but to slip into that conversation, I could see the Sony 20mm getting me out of that tight spot because of its size, relatively behaved autofocus, and low light performance. Oh god. What have I done in a past life to look like this? Ah, I gotta put this down. Alright, so we're gonna do more final wrap up with this half-assed tabletop tripod and lights willy-nilly scattered all over the place because I just want to show you what it would look like for the Sony 20mm to do a full-on vlogging video. And I have this absolutely ridiculous setup to illustrate a point. I mean, look, there's gonna be trade-offs with every single solitary camera and lens and combo thereof out there. And this is gonna be my main point for just about any sort of camera review or lens review I do in the future. I mean, look, I if I wanted a wider angle lens with OSS, I would have went for the Sony 10 to 18 and had to pay the price for it. If I wanted better visual quality and I was willing to not have autofocus, I would have went for a Rokinon or a Sigma lens. Look, what ends up in your bag all comes down to the trade-offs that you're willing to make. If you're looking for a small, compact, fast-ish lens with great autofocus, clearly the Sony 20mm is going to be the lens for you. I've included a whole bunch of different resources in the description down below for you to check out basically of what different reviewers had said about this lens, every single solitary resource I used for this video, and some other lenses that I mentioned that would be alternatives to the Sony 20mm. Because my point with making this video is not to influence anybody, it's just to give my opinion and hope that it helps you along the way to make your own decisions about the gear you use. So if you like this video, we're gonna have a lot more fun stuff coming down the line, a few different tech reviews, and maybe some film experiments if I can get off my ass and do them. So anyway, just remember, just like any other channel on YouTube, I'm just an with a camera and an opinion, and it all comes down to you for what you wanna do with it. All right, see you next time.